obviously a, a huge, huge win for them, and, and they, they earned it and they deserved it. Um, and uh, an incredibly disappointing loss. Uh, that's honestly all my years of football. I, I've never been a part of a game like that, ever. Um, and been here at Clemson a long time. Since I've been the head coach, we were 58-0 when we rushed for 200 and passed for 200. Uh, that's usually a pretty good indicator. And I think in, in Clemson history, we were 108-0. Never lost, ever. Uh, so, you know, but you got to finish. You got to finish. Obviously, this is inc incredible disappointment, you know, again, for the start of the season. And, and there's, you know, people are going to see the score and, 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 you know, make judgment on our team. But I love this football team. I love this team. And, uh, man, I, 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 see, I see a lot of opportunity ahead. And I see an opportunity to talk some more Duke football. For that, we bring in Chip Patterson waking up early with us this morning. And Chip, we saw the score and the game, so it seems like it's fair to make judgment of Clemson here because it was miscue after miscue. Now going back for them to last year, they have three losses in their last four games. What do you make of the Tigers right now? Um, they're regular. They are not elite. This is a Clemson team that we are used to being at the top of the mountain in the ACC and among the top 10 to 15 nationally. I mean, even in these down years that we saw in the last couple of seasons, they're still winning. <clears throat> they're still winning 10 games, something they've done for 12 straight seasons. But they were out there against this Duke team and they did not look stronger. They did not look faster. And they certainly were not executing better than the Duke Blue Devils. When you look across all of the offensive drives, two red zone fumbles, two missed field goals. Zach, that's 12 to 28 points left on the board right there. Throw in two turnovers on downs in Duke territory and an interception. I mean, it is great for Dabo Sweeney to address his team and say, look, we threw for 200, we ran for 200. Look inside the statistics on a down-to-down -down basis. You know, we were good enough to win this game. That is fine for your own locker room to motivate them and not allow this loss to linger. But us sitting on the outside trying to analyze Clemson with a clear view, this is a regular football team. Now, top 25, sure, but not top 10 and not a team that should be favored to win the ACC. There are opponents on this schedule, most notably Florida State on September 23rd that are, have looked better so far. I would throw Notre Dame in that mix. I would throw North Carolina in that mix as well. I'll tell you what, Zach, 12 straight seasons of 10 wins or more after what we saw against Duke, getting to 10 might be a struggle. Yeah, you speak of 10. No top 10 team had lost an opener to an unranked team by 11 or more points since at least 2000. Maybe we're getting a little bit closer and a few years away from getting a Clemsoning reference popping back up for us and Dabo Sweeney getting angry. We'll see if we can get that. What we do get, though, right now was Duke, which had never won a season opener over a ranked opponent. Not to be prisoner of the moment too much, but is this the biggest win for them in Duke football history? It's the biggest win since 1989 because that is the last ACC championship for Duke football. The head coach at the time was Steve Spurrier, and that big win in the 1989 season that helped clinch that ACC title, well, it was against the top 10 Clemson in Wallace Wade Stadium. Uh, this is honestly one of the biggest wins since the invention of color television. Duke football had its heyday in the 30s and 40s, but this is a spot where Duke is going to look at the moment, and this is affirmation that what we saw last year was not a fluke because everyone saw that Duke was able to beat up on the bad teams in the ACC, but with the new scheduling format, we looked at a schedule that's going to have Clemson and Florida State and Notre Dame and NC State and Louisville and, of course, North Carolina. We said, whoa. This Duke team might be better with Riley Leonard, another step forward, so many players back from that nine win team, but that schedule's too tough. They could be good, Zach, but they'll probably only win six or seven games. Oh, you take down Clemson in the manner that Duke did, all the teams on that schedule better be put on notice about what Mike Elko has going there in Durham. Yeah, definitely got to keep track of what they are doing there over at Duke. The last time they were ranked was in 2018. Maybe a chance for them to crack the rankings when they come out. But let's take a look at them and maybe another team that had a shocking upset this opening weekend. That, of course, is Colorado. Where do you think those two schools will land when we get the new AP poll? 
I think it's going to be Colorado landing at number 20. You know, they went on the road as a three touchdown underdog and beat the number 17 ranked TCU uh, in that game. So I believe that they're definitely going to be making an arrival uh, close to where TCU was. It, just in terms of the, the rankings math of it all, uh, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, it might be tough after just one game for Colorado to jump ahead of some of those teams who all looked fairly impressive in wins. But I think they're going to get ahead of Ole Miss. I think they're going to be ahead of Texas A&M. Uh, I think that Colorado is going to find itself in a position where, heck, follow it up with a win against Nebraska and look as good on offense and as explosive on offense as they did. Now we're going to start to think about Colorado moving up uh, closer to that 10 to 15 range. But I mean, from unranked and not on a single ballot all the way to number 20, I think that's what it is for the buffs. And I think that Duke is going to end up landing near the edge of the poll. Give me 23 or 24 on CBSSports.com. My official prediction is 23. I think that Clemson might be on the very edge. Falling from number nine all the way to out of the rankings is not something we see very often after a week one result. I think this is a case instead where Clemson is around 24 and then Duke with the head-to-head -head win jumps right ahead of them at 23. So someone who will be jumping ahead in the polls ahead of them will be LSU because they were the only team in the top five to lose this past weekend. What do you think the new top five will look like? I think that there will be a, a reaction to Florida State's win where the Seminoles are going to jump from number eight up to number five, that spot that was occupied previously by LSU. I think we'll see a swap of three and four from what it was in the preseason ballot. I mean, the voting points between Alabama and Ohio State preseason were 1,400 to 1,398. That is a razor thin margin. And with what Alabama did, Jalen Milrow looking fantastic with five touchdowns compared to Ohio State only able to get 23 points on the road at Indiana. I think more than a couple of voters will switch their opinion. No change at one and two, Georgia and Michigan as expected. So that's what you think the voters will do. What do you think it should look like? Yeah, don't overreact so much. When I'm filling out my CBS Sports 133 ballot later today, and we'll see the, the full consensus later on this week on CBSSports.com, I'm going to leave things for the most part intact. Georgia 1, Michigan 2, Ohio State 3, Alabama 4. And then instead of overreacting with Florida State all the way up to number 5, uh, I will be looking at a USC team that has uh, you know, just gone out and put 60 points on everybody. Uh, Caleb Williams has nine touchdowns already. I think the Trojans are, are deserving of that five spot given what they've done. Against Mountain West competition, yes, but man, that offense is going to be tough to stop against any competition. Chip Patterson tapping in after an eventful week one of the college football season. Thank you so much, Chip. We appreciate you for your time. You can always hear him over on the Cover 3 podcast. Make sure you check them out. The gang in their latest episode, they're talking Florida State, LSU, some clock rule changes, ACC expansion, and a lot more. So tap in, like, subscribe. Give a look at that QR code if you need to as well.